Robertson. But has the Secretary of State raised the unfairness of the bedroom tax with the Chancellor of the Exchequer? Will he not tell him that it is one of the most rancid pieces of legislation that has been run through since the poll tax? Yeah, yeah. Will he remind us how many Scottish MPs in this House voted for it? Can I just say to the Honourable Gentleman that for as long as his party come forward with lots of promises but no ways of paying for them, folk are not going to listen terribly carefully to what he has to say. Mr Angus Robertson. Anybody watching this debate will have noticed the Secretary of State wasn't prepared to confirm that 82 per cent, 82 per cent of Scottish members in this House voted against the bedroom tax. So just like with the poll tax, an unpopular, regressive measure is being imposed on people in Scotland when the overwhelming majority of their public representatives are totally opposed to it. Could he explain how in a modern 21st century democracy it is possible to impose something just like the poll tax, the bedroom tax on Scotland? I want to have a sustainable welfare system that protects the most vulnerable and supports people into work and makes that pay, which the reforms under universal credit will help to ensure, backed up by our fair tax delivery, which has meant that over 180,000 Scots are now out of tax altogether, and two million Scottish families, low and middle incomes, are paying less tax as a result. This is Margaret Curran. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Could the Secretary of State make a representation on behalf of my constituent, Mrs Frances Corner? Treatment for her cancer has left her with no feeling in her feet or her hands. Her only help comes from her son, who stays with her three nights a week. The bedroom tax means she can't afford the room where her son stays. Why is the Secretary of State making it impossible for a son to care for his mother? Yeah, yeah. First of all, can I, uh, like her, express my deepest sympathy to her constituent and her family and recognise uh, the challenging personal circumstances in which uh, they uh, live. We are looking to support uh, some of the most vulnerable in these circumstances with transitional arrangements. I'd be happy to discuss that further with her. Margaret Curran. Uh, can I thank the Secretary of State for that answer? Perhaps in that discussion we could talk about the thousands of others who are hit by this bedroom tax as well, because the transitional protections do not help those people. Mr Speaker, I wonder if the Secretary of State ever imagined that he'd be signing off such policies with the Tories. Last year the Secretary of State said, judge us by our record. Is making a son's care for his mother unaffordable what he had in mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, May I, as I did earlier on in response to her honourable friend, just remind her of the scale of the financial challenge that faced this government when it came into office and the need to tackle those serious problems. And also to remember that we have introduced huge other measures to help families across Scotland. And I have to say to her, as I said to the honourable gentleman earlier on, we're not hearing credible solutions coming forward from her and her colleagues and until such times as we do, we'll fr- not take any lessons in fairness from her. Sir Angus Brendan McNeil. Question six, Mr Speaker. The United Kingdom Government welcomes the reports from the Electoral Commission. We agree with the Commission's advice on the question, the funding levels for the referendum and on the clarity of the process. Brendan, Brendan McNeil. Uh, when in opposition the Secretary of State wanted to extinguish his office, now he's in government, he's publishing papers that talk about extinguishing Scotland. Yes, extinguishing Scotland. So as an act of repentance, will he ensure that his Tory Liberal, liberal Government plays fair with the Electoral Commission, as the SNP Government is doing, and enter into dialogue to together as the electoral commission referee has asked on Scotland's future. Can can I say to him that uh, I'm sure he welcomes the publication of this uh, major contribution to the debate by the UK government earlier uh, this week. We agree with the electoral commission's uh, recommendations. The issues are being flushed out by this uh, document on the legal status of Scotland in the UK and of course over time as these issues are discussed further as appropriate we will meet with the Scottish government. As I have said on many occasions already, I'm delighted that was good news for the Donald Jones.